Hello guys, it is Midnight from Midnight Terror 890 Official, and today we're going to be reviewing the Nerf Rival Takedown. To start this off, there is no sling point at all. Some people say that that right there is a sling point if you can see it, but I don't have any slings that fit there and it would have to be a custom sling, so I don't consider that a very good sling point. Basically not slingable. It can, however, fit in a rough cut holster, I'm thinking, because they are very similar in body shape and mold. I'll show you now. As you can see, they are very similar in body and overall geometry, which is why I'm thinking it can fit in rough cut leg holsters. So it's holsterable, just not like a pistol, it would have to go on your leg. The takedown has a capacity of eight because it has an internal magazine, which is different from a regular magazine. Not necessarily better or worse, very different. We might actually make a video on that one day. Soon. There is only paint on one side on this Nerf gun that says Rival. Which, honestly, it would have looked better without any paint at all, to be honest. And there is a safety, but it's only on one side. Not that I'm saying you should ever use the safety, to be honest. It's not really. It's just there if you want it. It has technically two tactical rails on the top. Because if you hold it up, there's one. And then that's where you feed the balls in, and then there's technically another one. The grip has zero texture, so it might be a harder to grip for some people, but it might also be more comfortable. But that's just a matter of opinion. The pump grip also has a lack of texture. In a longer Nerf War, you might accidentally slip of this pump grip. The bump does help a lot, but maybe you might if you're a little too sweaty or worn out. But it's not a huge problem because you can actually buy replacement ones. So that problem's very easily fixed. The pump on this is actually a little hard, so I wouldn't recommend a smaller child like if you're buying this for a smaller child i might not recommend it maybe like after eight you might be able to pump it if you try because it is very hefty of a spring inside overall i actually think that it's very smooth holding it and it just feels so good the pump i really like how the pump feels it feels so realistic and there is a fancy piece of plastic up here, if you can see, which is mainly for cosmetic reasons, but it technically lines up with this iron sight, and it more or less works. It's not like the most precise ever, but I mean, it's also not going to be the most precise weapon, though it is noticeably more precise than some of its rival companions. To feed, you simply push the pump and don't push it back, which will reveal a hole where you can feed it through, unlike the Cronus where you had to open a hatch. It should be noted that it takes a little bit more skill to load this than the Cronus and you might accidentally have a problem where you have to prime it and push it backwards twice, shoot it twice to shoot the first ball but you can act, it's really easy to learn but it's still a complaint by many. You can also do a full body work on this and make it a tactical shotgun. This gun also does not lack in the modding 
potential, not just because of the body kit I was talking about, all those body kits, but because you can do something to it called the side mag, which is where since it's very similar to the Cronus, which had the Cronus mag or the Chrono mag. With this one, you mount a magwell on one of the sides so it feeds half length darts inside. So modding potential is definitely there. I will now be shooting the takedown and try to land it inside that target bear's mouth to show the accuracy. I am firing from about six feet away. Each time you hear that noise, that means I land it. See, that is the problem. Sometimes it accidentally dry fires instead of shooting it because it didn't breach correctly. Again. Alright, last time. And that is it for the firing demo. Now to my conclusion. I forgot to mention the fact that this nerf gun does have a deep prime button, making it optimal for nerf modifications. And since it is a rival blaster, hopefully we'll continue the trend of having metal catches. Well, hopefully, because the finisher didn't seem to have that. So overall, in my final opinions, I think that the takedown is a very, very solid nerf gun. I can definitely recommend buying one for the price of $20. Sometimes it goes up to 30 I'm pretty sure it's better to just wait for 20 for 20 it's definitely worth it. It goes above and beyond expectations. It has a very strong spring, a good prime, a decent pump, decent ergonomics, a good capacity, and very high modding potential. Now, before this video ends, I want to just mention the fact that we reached 51 subscribers at the current moment, but we're gonna be celebrating 51 So We want to hear what your ideas are for the 50 subscribers special We're gonna continue and See which of your plans is the best we have some plans ourselves But we are very interested in seeing what you guys want Thanks for all the support by the well. It really helps a lot every subscriber we didn't ever expect our channel to grow this fast thank you and that is it and that is it thanks bye and see you next time on the channel